like to make a comment? Yeah, um, really quick question in terms of like variant perspective versus speculation or what the market already knows. Like for example, in case of Amazon, you keep on mentioning, I'm a bit confused because I feel like the market knows so much about it. There's so many people looking into it and there's so much already priced in. So if you think about it, it's gonna be huge in the future, like everybody thinks that way. So where is the variant perspective comes in? Like how could, should I think about it or should I just ignore this kind of stuff? Because you tell us not to ignore them, but I feel it goes against the principle of, of fundamental analysis. Well, you know, that's, that's a great question because um, there is a ton of information. There's a ton of um, analysts covering the company. Um, in, and there are folks that think they know how to value Amazon and uh, there's, they may be right. Um, I don't know how to, Amazon, uh, how, to, how to value Amazon, by the way, but um, I've seen an analysis of Amazon that looks at their uh, retail business um, and their uh, sort of reseller business um, and normal people do what they think is normalizing those margins and do a DCF on it. And there's a value associated with that. Um, and then people independently value uh, something like uh, AWS um, and they add those two values together. Um, a, a tremendous um, value added analysis uh, took place. Um, I forget the individual's name when uh, someone took a, a stab at uh, what is Amazon advertising worth? Um, relative yeah, that was Alex Sacerdote at Whale Rock at the uh, Robin Hood uh, conference. Uh, I sent around his uh, slide presentation um, uh, about four or five days ago. Perfect, perfect. So that's, um, you know, that's another, uh, sort of leg to that stool. And then um, is there value or not to the Amazon platform? Uh, that's another uh, analysis of people. So, so you know, you, you, can, you can come up with a, a, a variant perspective on big companies, but look, don't get me wrong. Amazon's approaching a trillion dollar company. People look at it a lot. It's easier to have an, um, uh, a variant perspective on Campbell's Soup. Um, it's easier to have a variant perspective on companies that are not in the news every single day um, and uh, with, with, with tons of, of new um, information and noise coming over, uh, coming over the transom. Yeah, um, I would add, I think, uh, Dimitri, you raise an excellent point, as is if I were to add a fourth criteria for where you should allocate your time and energy, is it would be um, um, you know, something that's a little off the beaten path um, where you're not competing against, you know, 45 Wall Street analysts and everyone else on the planet. Um, so, you know, I would generally at this point in time, I don't think spending huge amounts of time trying to become the world expert on Amazon.com is worth your effort. Now, look, you could have said that 20 years ago when I set out to become the world expert on Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger and Berkshire Hathaway you know, gee, those guys are pretty well known. It's a pretty big company, uh, but I didn't care. Um, I was just passionate about it. Um, and it turns out, by the way, among big cap companies, Berkshire Hathaway um, is followed by the fewest analysts um, and where there was, it turns out, opportunity to add real insight. Nobody, not, not one Wall Street analyst, nobody uh, had ever put out uh, any kind of uh, sensible valuation metrics. So when Glenn and I put together that slide presentation that we walked you through on day one or two, um, you know, that was really novel. Um, you know, taking the housing market, uh, you know, obviously there are a million uh, people and companies, you know, following mortgages and uh, mortgage-backed securities and the just general U.S. housing market, which is the largest debt market in the world. Um, you know, that said, um, uh, I was able to, uh, I came across a guy who had data um, and I've been following the housing market, you know, not as, not super passionately, but, um, you know, I, uh, but I knew something about it. And I came across a guy who, um, who had done, who had data and information and analyses that I immediately recognized were, I had never seen before, I had never read about before. Um, and, and the in, inescapable conclusion from what he was presenting was completely at variance with the consensus view out there that, uh, that the housing bubble had been limited to subprime and that we were in the seventh or eighth inning of working our way through the bursting of the housing bubble. Um, uh, you know, the data that he was showing was is, is that it infected the, all, all housing, all types of mortgages 
and it wasn't just the U.S. housing market. It was the entire debt market had become uh, very dangerous and, and filled with fraud, um, and that we are in the second inning of the unwinding, not the seventh or eighth inning, right? So the, even in pretty well-known uh, industries uh, or companies, um, there sometimes is opportunity to come up with uh, uh, some real insight, a real variant perception uh, that you can make a lot of money and uh, really build your reputation. Uh, but generally speaking, um, I would suggest, you know, going and going, trying to fish in ponds where there aren't already 500 fishermen crowding